Well, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to be working on Illustrator to create an animated optical illusion. And just for kicks, um, here's what I'm looking at online. And I'm going to create a ballerina that spins. Um, so here's uh, an example of uh, one guy's work, um, B-R-U-S-S-P-U-P. -S -S -P. He does a whole bunch of these. Uh, however, um, I'm using Illustrator, and the tutorials how to do these are, um, from what I'm seeing online, pretty hard to find. So let me stop this, and we will um, start a tutorial in Adobe Illustrator on how to uh, manage this. Now, first off, um, let me explain what I have here. I'm going to turn off these layers. I have a, a ballerina, and she's kicking or getting ready to spin with her... Um, right leg towards her uh, left and then the next one will be totally towards her left which will be our right then she'll be spinning backwards so that her so this is going behind her um, the next layer is a little bit further behind her uh, the following layer is going towards um, you know we're doing basically a 360 degree rotation so it's going towards her left now she continues to spin. Then we are completely uh, on the left here. And then finally, we have her coming back towards the front. And then she would end um, actually here. So it'll appear as if she's spinning. So this will loop. Um, another thing we're going to need is we're going to need lines. Now these lines are uh, very important. There's some mathematics involved. So I'm going to create these uh, new and fresh as if you've never seen them, but I wanted to show you um, this is also a separate layer that we need to create in Illustrator. Okay, so all together we can see that this would appear as if it goes around. Um, first off, let's talk about these lines. I'm going to create a new layer, and typically I rename this lines. And we're going to grab in Illustrator the... Um, uh, stroke tool or line tool rather and I'm going to create a line and I'm going to make sure that that line is about one point thick and black which it is now let's zoom in just a bit and you'll see that this is indeed a line let me change the color of this layer so we can actually see there's the line uh, that I drew, and then it basically uh, builds the uh, thickness of a line outside of the center of that. Now this will give us a problem because we're going to be doing some um, pathfinder options later and some compound paths, and if these aren't shapes versus lines, this can be a problem. So one of the first things I will do is go to Object, Path, Outline the Stroke, and it creates it. it makes it as an actual shape versus a line. Now, the math behind this and the science behind this is that we need to work in multiples of six. So I'm going to put six of these up, and then I'm going to have a space that's empty that is one-sixth of six of these. And um, so we'll start that process now. So let's go to Object, Transform, and Move. Shift-Command-M on a Mac is Move. So I might use that keyboard shortcut here in just a second. And for my horizontal move, I want to move this one point over zero points down. So horizontally I'm using it one point. Now I'm in inches so I type in one PT and it'll automatically convert to inches. I'm going to preview this and you'll see it'll move it identically um, the size that it was and shape over one but I want to hit copy. And then I'm going to hit command D which in essence means transform, transform again. So I'm going to do that six times, or a total of six lines. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I need a space, so I'm going to put a seventh, and then I need to know where the next set starts, so I'm going to put an eighth. But I'm going to delete the seventh one. Now I'm going to save this, and I save this as before lines because I want to have one that's also called after lines. So I probably should go ahead and do that so I don't mess up, but I've already saved this uh, so all of these are intact. So let me go ahead and do a save as, and I'm going to call this after lines. I'll call it number two because I've already done this once and I don't want to save over the, the previous one. Okay, so um, I'm going to make sure that these lines are merged together 
uh, or shapes as one continuous shape versus all these little lines. This is very important when I go later to um, create the uh, um, oh, well, it, it, basically the the cropping out of the images. So in order to get these to merge together, I should go to Pathfinder, which is Window Pathfinder, and there is a merge tool right here, and it brings it all together as one shape. So that's important, very important. We do that. Uh, I'm going to bring Pathfinder over here for a minute because we're going to use him again. Put him there, there at the bottom so I can quickly get to him. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this over at least, let's see, if we move it over six points then it'll cover up that gap. So I'm going to move this over seven points. So that's Shift Command, Command M for move. I'm going to type in 7PT. I always hit preview to make sure I'm doing okay and that's exactly where I want it to move, but I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to delete the little one that I made before as a guide. Okay. Now we're going to um, copy it again over and over again. First I have to select it. If I don't select it, this will not work. If I hit Command D, which in essence is going to transform and transform again. So there's a keyboard shortcut, Object Transform. There's the keyboard shortcut, Command D. This must be selected. If it's not selected, it won't work. So I'm going to hit Command D and it will move it again seven points over. Okay, so I'm going to do that several times until it covers my uh, dancing ballerina, my spinning ballerina lady, and I'm going to go all the way to the edge, or near the edge rather. Now this uh, is going to be um, something I'll print out on its own layer. So let me grab all these and um, what I'll do now is I want to make sure they're all together. If I look in this layer it's like all these multiple paths and I want them to be one big path basically or one big compound path so I'm going to go to object compound path and make and what you'll see now is that is one compound path instead of all individual lines that's important because if we later on we go to punch out the uh, artwork you want all these lines to act as one object okay so I'm going to save that now what we're going to do is uh, talk about this layering and why I've, la why I've uh, called my layers certain numbers. Okay, so this, let me turn this line off. Um, this layer is called zero, so that's my, kind of my, my, my original point that I'm starting out with. Uh, I'm going to, for each of these layers, I'm going to copy these lines and put them in each of these layers. And each of these lines will move over um, six points. So my first layer, I'm telling, reminding myself, hey, move the lines over six points. The second layer, I'm going to move six more points past that, so that's going to be another six points, so that's 12. And then the next layer, I'm going to move, it, move again another six points past, the, past um, my previous one, so that's 18. Um, and then the next one, another six, which will be 24. And then another six points over, so it'll be 30 and 36. So this is just helps me remind me that I need to move those lines over. I'm going to turn all these on so we can see what my next process is. The next process is going to be to take these lines and, um, or this compound path at least, and move them into each of these layers and put them over the artwork. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. Let me duplicate that and then go up to the next layer, put it above that artwork, and continue that process. Duplicate that compound path bring it up above the other compound path. By the way, my artworks, the, those are considered, you do want to make those compound paths. Um, sometimes just solid shapes work too. It's just my experience is uh, I've been having a little bit more luck if things are, are, are uh, compound paths. So I'm going to pull this back up to this layer. So each layer is going to have a set of lines, as you can see. Uh, so I'm going to continue this process of duplicating and moving above each of these compound paths within each layer until I have them all, excuse me, until I have them all done. So it's almost there. And by the way, I have seven layers. Originally I had done this and I thought it would only take six since I'm working in a mathematical calculation of six points. But that empty space is a seventh area, so I need to create a seventh. So there was some confusion there when I was looking at directions on how to do this. I had a missing, I had a missing gap or a, a gap where there was a missing uh, ballerina. So I had to have seven of these layers: zero, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, and thirty-six. Um, I, 
uh, yeah, so you have to have seven layers. Um, so let me turn, oh, I don't need this layer anymore, so I'm going to delete it. And this layer is just hanging out because I do, before, before I start the process of, um, of punching through these, you do want to make sure that you have one extra layer with those lines. In fact, that one's not a line, so I'm going to dump it. It was from an earlier attempt I was working on. And let's go ahead and duplicate that compound path again. Create a new layer. Bring it all the way to the top and drag that compound path to that layer and I'm going to call that layer lines. Okay, so that layer is really important because that's the one I'm going to print out. Let's turn it off so you can see it. It's just a plain old layer with lines. I'm going to turn that layer off for now, but I will turn it on while everything else is off and I'll print that layer on acetate. Uh, these layers will be printed after I'm done working with them. Um, they'll be printed on paper altogether. So let me turn these off except for this bottom layer. Now this next process is um, basically using these lines to cut little slices from this graphic. So I'm on my first layer where I'm not going to move the line, so that's why it's a zero, and I choose all of the graphics in that layer by clicking on the target. Then I bring up my Pathfinder panel. I'm going to rip that off over here so we can see that better. And in my shape modes, I'm going to do the minus front shape mode, which is this icon right here. Usually if you float over, it'll tell you, but right now it's not. But I do know that that's the minus front, and you'll see that it's sliced out what would you would see through the little windows in the lines. So that's the first one. I'm going to go to the second layer, click on the target, the little circle, and before, oops, I almost forgot to move that over six, so don't click on that target. Just click on the target for the lines, which are a compound path. You want to move those, so again that would be Object Transform Move, so that would be Shift Command M. We're going to move those over 6 points, 6 PT. Make sure you type in PT because right now I'm in inches. So you don't want to copy, you just want to hit OK and move that. Once that's moved, um, you know what, just to keep my uh, head straight, I'm going to move each one of these, the number that I have in here, because I always forget. So I'm going to turn on layer 12, or layer named 12, I'm going to click on those lines and I am going to move those, shift command M, 12 PT. So let's get these moved for each layer before I even start this, otherwise I'll get confused and I will forget. So let's move these 18 PT. So each of these is a number plus 6, the one each above one, so 18 plus 6 is 24. All mathematically super important. So 24 PT. Whoops. Excuse me, that won't work. And hit OK. And I got 30 PT up here. Turn that on. Hit the lines only. Make sure you're not clicking on the target for the 30. You don't want the lady selected. You just, or your artwork, you want the compound path of the line selected. And we're going to move that one. Again, that's Shift Command M. 30. PT, hit OK, and then the last one, which would be technically our seventh one, we're going to click on that, Shift Command M for move, and that would be 36 PT. All right, so we've gotten all of our lines moved. Each layer, the lines have moved six points to the right from the previous layer, so you can kind of see that. All right, now let's minimize this a little bit so you can see what layer we're working on. Now I'm going to grab on this uh, second layer up from the bottom, my second spinning lady. Now I've got my zero; that one's already done. I'm going to grab the, all the uh, all the elements on here. Use the shape modes of minus front. Let me turn these off so we can see what's going on and you will see that the second layer and the first layer they're kind of got a little they're a little sandwiched together but they're just a little slice of each again this is so the little window in these lines can see through to them now i'm going to turn uh, on the next layer grab all of it and minus back i just keep doing this grab the target minus back Click on the next layer, grab the target, minus, I'm sorry, minus front. I said minus back there for a second. 
uh, go to the layer, the, the top layer among it, click on the target, minus front, and then finally, the last one, click on the target, minus front. Now, I did call this uh, after lines, so I want to make sure I'm not saving over my before lines, because if you mess something up, you really do want to be able to go, go back um, and fix it. And once you do all this, that's kind of hard. Okay, so there should be a, if, if the, if the um, object is spinning on itself um, and staying kind of in place, there should be solid here. I was having problems when I only had six layers here. I had um, a gap and it was creating an invisible, um, in, in the animation it was creating, an it had a problem with something being invisible. Um, so we'll, we'll now go through, let's see, we'll kind of maybe kind of test this a little bit electronically. I like doing this uh, physically, but let me lock these layers so they don't move. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn these on, select them. Now the cool thing about this is when you color your uh, layer gray or particularly black, this is a little easier to deal with. Now I may have to zoom in to see this. Uh, now if the layer is colored like say teal, see what that does? That kind of gets a little bit of a visual problem. So I like to turn this layer uh, black as my color. Now I can grab this and I'm going to just use my arrow key and I'm going to move this and you can see that it appears as if this ballerina is spinning. Now, if I had the acetate printed, this would probably show up just a little bit better. I know it would, actually. Um, but because I have my layers turn, this layer, the selection turn black, um, then it's a little showing up a little thicker here than what it would in print. But if I were getting ready to print this, what I would do is I would turn off all of my layers except for the lines layer, and I would print that to acetate. Then when I um, am ready to print my ballerina, I would print this layer to paper. And as we saw in the video here, he's using these lines on acetate, and then all of his layers are printed on one piece of paper as well. Now his is much more complicated than mine, but you get the idea. So we know if we test this here by selecting on that layer, again, we may have to zoom in so we can see, and we start moving our line layer, it does appear indeed as if the ballerina is spinning. Very, very cool. Okay, so um, I know I'd like to see this a little more clearly, but you get the idea of it. So hopefully uh, you'll have some fun doing this kind of thing. It's, it's I've, I've been enjoying it. It's been taking me a while to figure it out, I think because I needed six layers. But uh, I need like a zero layer, which it counts, but uh, it's the mathematics that need to change six times. So the zero is the mathematics not changing, or the movement of the lines are not changing. Uh, we move them six spaces over, or six points over each time, all the way so that we get a 360 degree rotation. So that's why uh, you need seven layers versus six, at least in this example. So I'm going to save this, and I hope you guys have some fun with this. Uh, I sure have, and I'm going to maybe play around with more complicated graphics. Uh, thanks, and, and have a great, have, well, have a great time playing with this. Take care.